Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are starting week two of the Pantry Challenge. Now this is the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge hosted by Jessica over at Three Rivers Homestead. I will leave her video linked below. If you would like to check her out, I suggest you do because there's a reason that she is the host of this collaboration. She does wonderful pantry meals. She grows her own food. She has a freeze dryer and she's really good at feeding her ever-growing family. Congratulations again, Jessica. She is currently expecting, so I'm so happy for her. So make sure you check her channel out as well as everybody else who's participating in this collaboration. So for my challenge, I'm kind of going through what I have. I also want to make something new though and try new things. And Dawn over on my Facebook page just posted this enchilada recipe that's kind of dairy free and it's super easy to make. So I was like, you know what, for my enchiladas tonight, we're making homemade enchilada sauce. So this is going to be the first dinner of the week long series. What I'm going to be making are some pork enchiladas because I have this from a pork crown roast that I made. So I cut it up and I have, that's all the meat that I got from it. Eight cups of pork, very nice. And I'm gonna turn this into my enchiladas. So I have some pepper, some onions, some cheese here. Got my Carolina rice, which is wonderful because that's my name. And I pulled out a cream cheese from the freezer. So this is two blocks of cream cheese. One of the questions a lot is if you can freeze cream cheese and what it looks like when it gets thawed. So that's what we are going to discover today. I haven't mixed it up or anything. This is exactly from freezer to counter. And then I have some homemade chicken stock that we're going to use because I made it from my rotisserie chicken I got from Costco. It's super flavorful. Part of what I'm trying to get rid of in my pantry is some home canned goods, like these homegrown, home canned black beans that I've kind of just been staring at and not using. I don't know if it's just because I'm super proud of them, if I'm nervous about them, I don't know. But I canned them up in August of 2021 and we are going to eat them tonight. So I'm making black bean refried beans to go with it. For our homemade enchilada sauce, we're going to use fire roasted tomatoes. I think that sounds really good. And then I'm also going to be making a Spanish rice to go with the refried beans. I'm trying to decide if I want them all, the beans and the rice in the burritos, or if I just want like the pork burritos and then do beans and rice on the side. I think I might do beans and rice on the side because I never really do that. I usually always combine them into one giant burrito. So this will be kind of nice to just have, because it's bigger pieces of pork, just do a pork filling and then we'll do the enchilada on the side. So that is my goal for the evening. Thank you for being here with me. Let's jump in here and let's start these enchiladas. Before we get too far into the video, please make sure to give me a like, subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. Every like, comment, share, it really helps support me and my family. Thank you so much, guys. All right, let's get in here and let's make our enchilada sauce first. So here is the enchilada sauce in question. It is by Recipe Girl. And it's simply oil, flour, chili powder, chicken broth, tomato sauce, cumin, garlic powder, onion salt, and regular, regular salt. So instead of using canola oil, I am going to be using olive oil though. I just like that better. And this is um, just a mild one for Costco one. So we're going to do half a cup of olive oil. All right, let's turn this on. We're not going to get it too high, just enough to kind of get it simmering. So we're gonna put the oil in there and then this is four tablespoons of flour. We're gonna add that when it heats up a little bit. I'm also gonna be adding some chili powder. This is as Pinsies, is that their name? This is what Miss Karen sent me, a whole bunch. Just super kind of you, Karen, thank you. This is a fantastic brand. I'm looking forward to using it. Let's give it a smell. Oh, it smells good. Woo! Clear out the nostrils now. 
I am wanting the children to eat this as well. So normally, I am making a double recipe of this. So normally you would need four tablespoons of chili powder. So equal amounts chili powder to flour. But I'm just going to do half that, maybe even a little less. So that way it's not too spicy for the kids. Yeah, Still I mean, quite a bit. Yeah, I know you do. I hope that'll change soon. I like spicy. Got to tone it down for the kiddos. So that is all we're going to add at this point. Now the reason you want to add your chili powder but not your other spices is that you want this to kind of cook and that will release some of the oil in it. It's called toasting spices. So we'll add that with the flour. And then we're just going to whisk this up until it starts cooking and then it should thicken. This is what's going to make a nice thick sauce for us. I'm not going to lie, this is my first time making homemade enchilada sauce. Thank you, Dawn, for posting it. If you guys don't know about my Facebook group, I will have it linked below. Lots of good recipe sharing, support, and um, I don't know, just overall good community over there. So please join it. I will have it listed below. I'm starting to cook a little bit. Now you could also use butter. Say about using butter instead of oil, but I have quite a bit of olive oil. So it's better for me to use up some more of my olive oil that I have than my butter that I have less of, you know? Oh, it smells good. I can't believe it's four tablespoons of chili. I feel like that would be spicy. You could really add um, anything. You could round your own chilies. You could add chipotle. I used to like chipotle chili powder. I'm out of that, but that was one of my favorite. I would use that instead of regular chili powder. Now this you cannot can because of the flour in it. So if you're looking for a canning recipe for enchilada sauce, this is not the one. We'd have to try a separate one for that. All right, so you just want this to cook. It'll get a little, kind of cook the flour a bit. And now we are going to add our chicken stock. So that was three cups because I'm doing a double recipe here. All right, now we're gonna add in our tomatoes. Now this might be a little chunkier because this is crushed tomatoes, not tomato sauce, which is the original recipe. But you know guys, don't be afraid to go off the recipe, especially with like cooking versus baking. Just use that and wing it, use what you have. Part of pantry cooking is knowing what substitutes you can use and how it's gonna change it. So this being a little chunkier is not gonna really change the taste much, in my opinion. And then you can always use your, like, your immersion blender if you for sure don't want those chunks in there, you know? But I don't see a big deal about it. And it adds that extra developed flavor of fire roasted tomatoes. All right, one teaspoon of cumin, some garlic powder, Pepper. And then this is just a little bit of garlic salt that you crush up. I'm trying to get it used up. So I'm going to use some of this and replace it with some of the salt. And a little extra garlic never hurt anybody. Right, and then just a splash of salt. Probably about half a teaspoon. And then we'll taste it from there. And then now as this starts thickening up, this should be our sauce. I'm gonna turn my oven on. Turn it on 375. And now our sauce is thickening here. Let's work on our filling. So I'm just going to mix this up. It looks like it kind of separated a little bit. So the good thing about vacuum seal bags. All right, so there's our cream cheese. Definitely a little grainy here, but since we're using it as a filling. Did you find your cilantro? I did not find my cilantro that was freeze dried, but yeah. that's all right. It'll be okay with that. Oh, that's okay. You go ahead and vacuum. She's gonna vacuum. We'll just mix up stuff here. I don't think that's too loud. All right, let's add some cheese in here. 
And then I have a backup bag that I need to take out. Let's add some garlic salt to this. Also have some freeze dried green onions here. Last of those. Add those in there. And let's do some cumin. Just a little bit of filling. The pork, you know, it, it was seasoned on the outside so it doesn't have too much seasoning on the inside. So we're gonna add a little bit to this here. Um, let's do some fresh ground pepper. Thicken it up here. This filling looks pretty good. I might just mix. We'll see how this goes. I'm just winging this. So. Let me clear my spice here. Some of this I'm going to need for the rice. <laughs> Guys, listen to this. I think I'm going to put olives in this. No. <laughs> what? No olives? Oh, man. All right. No olives. <laughs> Looks pretty good. How's our sauce looking? Mmm, that smells delicious. <laughs> She's like, I can't smell it. All I can smell is my stinky feet. Oh boy. Betty Jan, you are my daughter. Oh, that tastes good. I do not think that is spicy at all. I love that. Just the right of flavor. So this is the garlic salt. I'm putting a little extra in here. I think it needs more salt, but I think the garlic salt will be fine. Yeah. All right. Let's give it another taste. Good to me. Let's turn it off. Where's our sauce? Okay, so we're gonna put some sauce on the bottom here. In the sides and roll. So I'm just going to keep doing that until this whole pan is full and then we'll see how much we have left over. We might do a freezer meal with this too. All right, so I got two, four, six, eight pork enchiladas there. Now let's pour our sauce over them. Some might just consider these like smothered burritos because I think the flour tortilla is not technically the correct one for enchiladas. This is just what I always do. Make sure it's got lots of sauce. All right, we're gonna cover this up. I have my oven at 375 and we're going to put this in for 30 minutes and then we'll check it. I have a kettle tray here. I think I'll make one more backup. I think I'll have enough. Definitely go through tortillas. I need to stock up with some more. Make some more. Like I have a tortilla press. But I just worry that I wouldn't be able to make like big tortillas like this. Like, would that be something that I'd be better off just rolling by hand? Any suggestions would be appreciative. Okay. 
All right. So we have one for dinner and then one for the freezer. We're going to let this cool completely though before we wrap it up. All right guys, now that the enchiladas are in the oven, we are going to start our rice. Start it right here. Start with a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. There's some peppers and onions I'm still trying to use up that kind of got in the freezer, so they're a little frozen, but I think that'll still be okay. They're almost on their last leg. So I'm not going to be bashful with them since I need to get them used up anyway. Bell peppers, that water will cook out as well. And then same thing with a diced onion. Remember, I am going to double this recipe, so I'm making quite a bit. And then I have some freeze-dried jalapeno peppers I'm going to add as well. And I feel like they will reconstitute in the um, water and oil there. Woo, spicy when you open it. Now this won't make it too spicy because that was just a little bit. Alright, so we're going to let that cook and sear a bit, and then I'll bring it back. I forgot, I'm also going to add in some garlic at this point. This is my olive oil, garlic roasted in olive oil. Add a good chunk to it. And I'm also trying to use this up, so that's a good way to utilize that as well. Alright, so we're going to let this cook, burn off some of that water. And then as soon as it starts getting all crispified and stuff, I'll bring it back. All right, everybody, welcome back. It's probably been, I don't know, three or four minutes. I'm kind of trying to crush the garlic. This is the last of the one batch where I didn't pre-dice it. Next time I diced it, because they do kind of still stay whole. I can link the video where I made roasted garlic if you're interested, it's really good. This smells absolutely delicious. So we're gonna add two cups of white rice. Now, it did not say to rinse the rice, so anybody who makes authentic Spanish rice or Mexican rice, if this is the right way to do it, please let me know. So just to kind of toast it for a little bit. So we're gonna do that for a bit. And then we'll add in, we got chicken stock. I have a can of tomato sauce here. Now with all my cans, I mark on the front when they expire, so that way when they're lined up, I can know which one I need to use first. Because sometimes with going to the food bank, when you bring food in, it could be past this, ex or it could be before this expiration date. So I could get one that, that expires October of 21. So that one technically needs to get used first, even though I had this one first in my house. You see, so that's how I kind of make sure that they stay organized and that I'm using the oldest first, not necessarily the oldest that came into my house. Because who's got time to sit there and dig around and dig all the expiration dates and try and find, remember where they are. So I just like to write them on the front. All right, I'm gonna put some garlic salt in this one as well. Just trying to use this last little bit up. Oh, almost gone. And I guess I have a grinder I could keep for something. Uh, there's one thing gone. Doesn't it feel good to use stuff? There we go. That's gone. I'm gonna add, so also add a teaspoon of cumin, a little bit of black pepper. Oh, getting crunchy down there. See, like all that water from all that ice and everything is completely gone now, so. If you cook from frozen veggies, it's really not a big idea. No, not a, not a big idea. Not a big deal. All right, I'm kind of mashing the garlic as I see it, if I can. All right, so let's add our chicken stock. I have two cups here because I had two cups of rice. And I'm gonna make sure I scrape the bottom because you saw when I was mixing it, it had brown bits under there. So this is called deglazing. You wanna make sure you get all those bits up because that's a lot of flavor. And then I'm gonna add my one can of tomato sauce. all that up. That chicken broth was cold so it might take a little bit for this to come up to a simmer. 
But once it does, we'll turn the heat down low and close the lid, put the, put the lid on it and let it cook for about 15 minutes and then we'll turn it off. So I'll wait for this to come up to a boil and then we'll switch over to our beans. All right, this is up to a simmer. So I'm gonna give it a good stir. Make sure nothing's stuck to the bottom. Right now it is. All right. Put the lid on it. We're gonna drop this down and let this cook for 15 minutes. And then I wrapped those enchiladas, I labeled this, and now I'm gonna wrap this in saran wrap, and this is going in the freezer for our next meal. All right, while our rice is cooking, we are going to move on to our black beans. So I'm gonna put some olive oil in the pan. Let's get that on. Let's open up our black beans. Now you can also use pinto beans. All right, I'm not gonna rinse these. We're gonna keep all the juice in there which wasn't much left. These were one of the very first things I canned were some beans. I canned it up, 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 canned it up, up, up. Seal on those still. All right, so these are just use canned beans and then we're gonna mash them. Some people use their emulsion blender. Emulsion blender, emulsion blender. That works great as well. Let's do some cumin. 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 Ah! Season with a little bit of cumin. Salt, garlic powder. And then we're gonna smash as we stir. So now you're pretty much just heating these up. Mash them to, obviously easier to use pre-mashed, but that's one thing, but I don't think they make refried, black bean refried beans, they might, but it's definitely something you can do. We love black beans. We're actually hoping to grow black beans again in the garden this year. And it's as easy as that. Let's see, the rice has eight minutes. All right, I'm gonna turn this off. Let's open up. Open up thing. I only have one more pack of these cheese, so I might have to go buy some cheese before the end of the challenge. Which I'm okay with. My main goal was just to kind of use up things from the pantry. So I don't mind if I have to go buy something to help use things up, you know. All right, so let's put some cheese on this. Cheesy refried beans. Put a lid on that. All right, we'll let that melt. And then I'll bring you back when it's time to check the rice. Let's see, we got three minutes left, so let's check the enchiladas. Holy moly. Wow. I was not anticipating that delightfulness. Look at all that. Look at it. All right, so we're gonna put some cheddar cheese on top. That gorgeous cheesy look. And then we'll put it back in for 10 more minutes to kind of Melt that cheese. Oh, that looks so good though. Anybody else gasped when I opened that? All right, back into the oven. All right, that's back in the oven. Let's turn our rice off. And it's gonna sit for 10 minutes as well, so that's perfect. So we'll let everything sit for 10 minutes and then we'll be back. Our enchiladas are done. Obviously fresh sal or cilantro would be great on this, but I just have some parsley. I'm just gonna sprinkle some on top. Oh man. Oh 
Nelly. This looks delicious. Really glad I tried that homemade enchilada sauce tonight. I like it a lot and it really didn't take much effort or ingredients. All right, we're gonna let that cool. Let's flash over to the rice. All right, I haven't touched it since I turned it off. Ooh, got a little toasty down there it looks like. Hopefully that's not burnt. Let me try that. Mm. That's fine. That's not so cool. It got burnt on the bottom a little bit. Well, the bottom got a little burnt, which is disappointing. The rice is fully cooked, though. And it doesn't taste bad. I'll try not to um, get scrape up the bottom too much and get it incorporated. I think it'll be okay. Mmm. It tastes really good though. Might be a little spicy, a little too much on the jalapeno still. All right, now the beans. Those look pretty picture perfect as well. I like beans. Mm -mm. All right, let's make a plate. Wow, this looks phenomenal. Now, I usually do the rice and the beans inside the enchilada. I like that I have it on the side today, though. Oh, and of course, all the sour cream. Let's open up this pork enchilada here. It's pretty creamy. This is one of the pieces of pork. Oh, it's so hot, I'm gonna burn my mouth. When has it ever stopped me before? Give me a bite, give me a bite. All right, there we go. Mm -mm. There's some good eats tonight. All right, thanks for hanging out for day number one dinner, pork enchiladas. Let's see what I whip up tomorrow. For breakfast the next day, we were making bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches. I have a lot of English muffins that I need to get used up, and I have this bacon from February of 22 that also needs to get used up. This is hickory smoked bacon, so I'm going to go ahead and fry some of this up on my Vever skillet here, and then we're also going to be cooking up the eggs in the same skillet. I really like this because if you need to cook a lot at one time, this skillet really helps make a difference. It's kind of like a flat top. I'm calling it a skillet, but flat top. I like to pre-crack my eggs in a bowl and have them ready to go and then just pour them all on at the same time. Then I can separate them as needed into the sizes that I feel like will fit the sandwiches. I also like to pop the yolk because most of my family members do not like a runny yolk besides myself. So I'm going to pop them in the eye and then flip them over, we like to call it. And then I'm gonna hit them up with a little bit of all-purpose seasoning that I've made. I can leave that linked below if you're interested. And then over here, I'm going to be putting some mayonnaise on our English muffins while our eggs cook and our American cheese melts on top of them. I'm gonna add several slices of the hickory smoked bacon because we'd like to have a nice hearty sandwich. And that is what we had for breakfast today. Good old bacon, egg, and cheese McMuffin. Sure did hit the spot. Yum. For lunch today, I wanna utilize this jar of meatballs that I canned up. It's from June of 22. This was home canned meatballs in tomato juice and it kind of turned into a tomato sauce. And the reason that this has been in my pantry so long is because the meatballs are kind of dry. So that kind of makes me hesitant to use them, but I'm going to crush them up and make it into a meat sauce. My one quart jar of sauce is done enough, so I'm also gonna add a can of tomato sauce that I need to get used up for my pantry as well. And all I'm going to be doing is pouring this into some cooked whole wheat rotini noodles. You could really use any kind of noodles you want. And then I put in a bunch of Johnny's seasoning. This is like a garlic seasoning, it's really good. Some dried parsley and then some Parmesan cheese. And then we gave it a try to make sure that it was up to our standards and we decided that it needed a little more seasoning. That garlic seasoning is really fantastic and I love that you can add it just to a can of tomato sauce and make a really good pasta sauce. And then the kids and I decided that it needed a can of mushrooms. So we added that as well and that is what we had for lunch and it was absolutely fantastic and really hit the spot. Hey everybody, it's dinner. I have some leftover burgers, leftover bacon from this morning, cheese, tortillas, 
Got a couple of pickles I'm gonna dice up. And I got some home canned fruit cocktail. Doesn't look beautiful. This is peaches and pears. And I think nectarines that I got from the food bank when there was an abundance this summer. So I canned that up. We're my own fruit cocktail. So that's what we're gonna have for dinner tonight. So I am gonna cut up this meat a little bit. We could just serve this as burgers, but there's only three patties, so it wouldn't be enough for all five of us. But by cutting this up and turning it into quesadillas, it's kind of stretching it enough to make it for everybody. Hopefully you can see okay. One thing you may not know about me is I like to cook with the lights off. Obviously it's not completely dark. All right, let's get some pickles. All right, there's another empty jar out of my pantry. It's definitely a great thing about this challenge is that it gets you to use stuff up. And it feels good when you use stuff. You could also use sweet relish if you don't want to chop up pickles. I don't know, I think that might be enough. And then you can also add onions if you're an onion person. So we're gonna get this heated up. Put a layer of cheddar cheese here, shredded cheddar. Big yours. And then bacon. A little bit more cheese. Let that cook a little longer and then we'll flip it. Okay, and for this dipping sauce, I'm just gonna make a big batch for the whole family. We're doing mayonnaise and ketchup. Cook a little longer, get a little melty, but that is what's for dinner. Mmm. Oh, that's good. Okay, I figured you guys would want to see me open the jar. Once again, a reusable lid. These work great. Ooh, and a vanilla brine. It's so much better than commercial canned. Guys, definitely need to start looking into learning how to water bath can, at least water bath can. Everything's so much better homemade. And they'll probably get more of this, but that's what they're getting for dinner. I'm cooking more quesadillas so they can have another round. So for breakfast today, I was going through my freezer trying to pick out what I needed to use up. And I realized that I had two steak breakfast burritos left and also a bacon one that I had made a while ago. So we're gonna eat up these three. And then I also had a couple of muffins left over, so we are going to get these cut up and everybody's going to get like half a burrito and half a muffin. And that's going to be our breakfast for today, plus probably some fruit. Hey everybody, for lunch today I found this bag of mini wontons in my freezer. And I got this from my friend when she emptied out her freezer when it smelled like crabs and she didn't want it. And I'm not much of a wonton eater but this is something that needs to get used up so I stuck it in the air fryer for about eight minutes uh, this one got a little crispy but I think that's good it's like cilantro chicken and then I made a quick sauce with sesame oil soy sauce chili flakes vinegar and pepper mm -mm. and that's what's for lunch today Hey everybody, for tonight's dinner, we are going to be making white bean turkey chili. I looked up a recipe because I still have lots of turkey that I'm trying to use up. And white chicken chili is one of my dad's favorite. So this reminds me a lot of him and I get to use up my turkey. So I'm probably going to try and make a pretty good batch, add some stuff to it, and I might freeze some. 
All right, so I'm gonna get this up to medium high, add some olive oil in here. I have the last of my peppers and onions. I wanna get all these cooked up, so I'm gonna saute all of this. Um, I'll probably keep it in there, honestly. And then I also have some garlic here that I'm still trying to use up as well, so we're gonna cook this with it. This is pre-cooked that I infused in olive oil. I'm gonna mash this up a bit. This is the last of the one with the full cloves. After that, I diced the garlic before I infused it, and that's gonna be a lot easier. Not that this isn't bad, because it's still cooked, so it's kind of easy to mash, but. All right, so let's add this. And then our garlic. Shoot, I'm just gonna use all of it. Kind of mashing it to the bottom of the pan here. All right. We're gonna cook this probably about five minutes. In the meantime, I have a can of diced green chilies that's gonna go in there. I found this can of gold and white corn. I think that's gonna go really well in there, so we're gonna put that in there. I have some great northern beans that I canned myself, so I have a quart and then a pint, and I'm going to be draining and rinsing those. And then I have the last of my chicken stock that I have for my Costco chicken is going to get added to that as well. And then for seasonings, I have chili powder, oregano, cumin, smoked paprika, salt, and pepper. And then I'm, it, the recipe also calls for cilantro, which I don't have. I cannot find my freeze-dried cilantro right now, which I'm super upset about. But I do have a giant bag of parsley that needs to get used up, so we're gonna open this and substitute this instead. Which a lot of people don't mind. If you don't like cilantro, then you can easily trade out parsley for that. All right, so we're gonna keep this cooking, and then I'll bring it back. This has been cooking, starting to get some flavor, starting to crisp up on the bottom of this. Starting to get some flavor and then some smell. Here is our turkey. Probably three to four cups. If I end up making a double batch, that's fine. Well, some of this is still kind of big. I should have looked at that. All right, let's add our cumin, chili powder. So I'm not adding too, too much because it is for the children as well. Smoked paprika. Uh, it's turkey chili. Some freeze-dried oregano. at our can of green chilies. Now this is a big one, the seven ounce, or you could add two small ones. Corn. And here's our beans. Oh really? I have no idea. Alright, let's fold all this in here. Now our chicken broth. And then I'm going to add about one cup of water as well. And this will come up. Make sure you're scraping the bottom of the pan. Get all that crusty bits up. Black pepper and some salt. All right, and the very last ingredient we're going to do about a cup of parsley or cilantro. And then we're gonna bring this up to a simmer and let it cook for probably about 20 minutes. Just to co kind of combine all that flavor. As you can see, I have quite a bit of parsley left, so I am looking for all parsley recipes. I was thinking about mixing it in with my, um, like making pasta or gnocchi. 
and mix it in with that. I think that would be good. But for now, about three quarts. All right, so let's let this cook and then I'll bring it back and we'll finish her off. One thing I've been meaning to do is get this last bit of this oil out from this giant jug. So I'm just gonna put it into a quart jar here and then that way I can use it from there. Cool. Yeah. So I'm gonna let that drip and then I'll be able to use my oil from here and not from this giant jug. So we'll let that sit. I'm gonna give this soup a try, see if it needs anything. Oof, that's some great flavor. Oh, I almost put cinnamon sugar in there. Not what I was looking for, salt. <laughs> that's what I was looking for. Definitely needed some more salt. Let's do just a smidgen more pepper. I love this rainbow peppercorns. They're so pretty, you see little bits of um, like pink flakes in there too. All right. Well, it's much better. All right. At this point, we are going to add some yogurt, one cup of yogurt. All right, let's slowly fold this in. Oh. You could also use sour cream you don't have this or cream cheese I would make this a little spicier if it was me but I think it'll be great especially with the kids so I can always drizzle some extra hot sauce or something on mine to make it a little more man this tastes really good I'm gonna let this cook and kind of cook that sour cream a bit husband's gonna be home in about 10 minutes and then we'll all sit down and we'll eat some dinner together so this is it for tonight's dinner let's stay tuned for what I cook next for today's breakfast, I'm going to be using up a can of potatoes that I have. These are Idaho potatoes. And then I have five turkey eggs that I'm going to be scrambling. This is the pre-cooked sausage that I bought at the chef's store. This is what I'm going to be cooking up for our protein this morning. I absolutely love this sausage. Definitely something I'm going to be getting more of in the future. And then for my canned potatoes, I just drained them and rinsed them. And now I'm going to cut them pretty small because I want them to be completely dry and I want them to be crispy so the best way to handle canned potatoes is rinsing getting all that starch off making sure they're super dry and then frying them like that so i'm going to add a little bit more of this all-purpose seasoning that i made and i'm going to give that a good toss this is a good way to make sure that all the potatoes are coated and having paprika really makes a good sear on anything that you're frying in your spices if you put paprika in your spices so now I'm going to be using the sausage grease I got from frying up the sausage and I'm going to make a thin layer of the potatoes and that's just going to help them crisp up. Now you want to make sure you leave them alone. You don't want to be flipping a lot because that will keep the potato from getting crispy. You kind of want to put lots of grease down and forget about them is the best way to fry potatoes. I'm going to be making some pork fried rice later in the week, so I want to cook some of these scrambled eggs for that. I don't want to use them all for breakfast, so I'm going to be taking just some of them. This is probably, I don't know, three eggs worth, and I'm going to fry them up separately with just a little bit of seasoning and not have them a part of the breakfast because I'm going to add a little bit more stuff to the leftover eggs for breakfast. So this I'm just doing as part of my meal prep for the next meal is just to pre-cook these eggs, get them cooked up, put some seasoning on. On there and then I'm going to save these eggs for later which is what I'm going to be using for my fried rice. Now that I have the eggs made for the next meal, I'm gonna doctor up the last couple of eggs here by adding some of the salsa to it. I really like adding salsa to eggs. I think it adds a completely different dimension to it. And then I'm also gonna make sure that I add seasoning as well, just to make sure that every part of this is seasoned. That's one thing about your food, you want every layer to be seasoned. So now I'm just gonna keep pouring them next to my potatoes here and scrambling them that way. I know sometimes it runs off into the potato, but not that big of a deal. 
I wouldn't mind a bigger grill, I could use it. But this grill comes in handy a lot, guys, and it's really compact. I liked that it's easy to move around. It's a 14 inch one. This is my Weber grill. I can leave it linked below if you're interested. It helps so much to be able to just kind of move a grilling service around without having to actually go to a cooking service. You know what I'm saying? So that's it on the scrambled egg. So I'm gonna get them pulled off and the potatoes are done. So all components of this breakfast burrito are done. I'm gonna be using the eight inch tortillas that I have from Costco. I really like these. And I'm just gonna heat them up a little bit on each side. And then we're going to add some shredded cheddar cheese, some of the sausage that I cooked up. There's some of our salsa scrambled eggs. And then I'm going to throw the potatoes on top. This is one where you can add salsa on top of it as well, sour cream, hot sauce, any kind of toppings you'd like. I'm gonna put a little bit of the cowboy candy on there because I like the spicy sweet combination with breakfast. So you're gonna roll it up just like you do burritos, tuck in the sides and give it a roll and a tuck so it's nice and tight. And that is what we had for breakfast. It was yummy, fast, and convenient. Moving on to lunch, I made just some boxed mac and cheese, nothing special, and then I did the rest of those home canned fruit cocktail. I used the rest of that jar up. And then I also have some home canned grapes. These were purple grapes that I got when there was a lot of them at the food bank. So I canned them in a simple syrup. So I'm going to be adding some of those to the fruit cocktail to kind of add more fruit to it and use some more things up in my pantry. Moving on to dinner, I'm going to make a big batch of meatloaf. What I have here are some canned mustard pickles. I thought that I would like these because I like pickles and I like mustard, but they're a little too vinegary for me. So what I have been doing is using my emulsion blender and I've been pureeing them and then mixing them in with meatloaf. Because I don't know about you guys, but I usually mix mustard into my meatloaf. So this is a good way to use up this product from 20 of 21 and it still adds great flavor to my meatloaf. Now that that is all blended, I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing my meat. I pulled out some bacon, some ground pepper bacon I need to use up I'm gonna add half of this so probably roughly half a pound or so of bacon in there and then this is two pounds of elk and then I'm gonna add two pounds of venison which is deer meat and then I'm going to be adding two pounds of ground beef so this is a good mixture of all different types of meat that I have in my freezer that I need to get used up and all of these I enjoy I'm going to add the whole pint of my pureed mustard pickles and then I'm going to add about a cup of salsa this is just from Costco and then I'm going to add two boxes of chicken stuffing mix I hear that stuffing's really good in meatloaf and I have a lot of boxes that need to get used up so I'm doing that let's throw in some of this fresh parsley that I have some salt some pepper and of course the who's your sister sauce so this is all that I'm going to be adding. Oh, and two eggs. I have those turkey eggs that I'm trying to use up, so I'm gonna add two of them. I do suggest that you scramble the eggs a bit before you add them into the meatloaf. It just helps to make sure that the eggs are fully incorporated and you don't get like lumps of white anywhere. Now this is one of those things where you kinda just gotta use your hands. So I'm gonna get in there with my hands. I did take my rings off for this. And then I just like to kinda grab it and push it down and do like a fold method. So I'm breaking up the pieces of meat as I get in there. You wanna make sure everything is equally distributed. So I'm kinda lifting it up, twisting the bowl, pushing it into the center lift up the outside, push it in, twist, and you just wanna keep doing this until the meat is fully incorporated. I usually like to give it a smell too to kinda of just make sure that I smell like it's gonna be pretty well seasoned. And then I'm going to be baking this in a nine by 13. I kind of push it, make sure it's in the shape of a loaf. And then I'm going to bake it this way with some foil on top. And then I will add my topping later on. Now for the remainder of this meatloaf, I'm going to try and vacuum seal it and get it put away for a meal for the freezer. One of the things I'm doing with this pantry challenge is not only trying to use stuff up, but to kind of make myself some freezer meals as well. So I'm going to be using these new vacuum seal bags that I got. I can have them listed below. I think they're really great quality. I took the top of the bag and folded it around the outside of it so that way the inside won't be touching it. And then I'm going to compact it as much as I can and try and vacuum seal it. I did, however, notice that with the juice, it did not vacuum seal all the way, which was a bit of a disappointment. But one of you guys told me that if you put stuff in the freezer and then try and vacuum seal it, it works a lot better. So we're gonna give that a try. 
I always like to give the seal a pull to make sure that it is sealed. This one did not, so we're going to chuck this into the freezer and give that a try later. Next, I'm going to be making some mashed potatoes in the Instant Pot. This is about five pounds of Idaho potatoes cubed up, and then I'm going to be adding two cups of homemade chicken stock and then some salt. This is going to pressure cook for 10 minutes. This is my favorite way to make mashed potatoes. It's a good way to just set it and forget it, and then you can do other stuff while this cooks. Next, I'm gonna be working on some green beans. These are some home canned green beans that I need to get used up. We are going to use those as well as some home canned carrots. So what I'm going to be doing is using the rest of that bacon that didn't go in the meatloaf, and I'm going to brown it all, cook it all up, not all of this I'm going to use for the green beans, but it's a good time to get it all cooked up. In the meantime, my mashed potatoes are done, so I'm going to get the lid off and we are going to mash them. I'm just using my Danish dough whisk here. This is absolutely fantastic. I love this one. I can have it linked below if you're looking for a really good whisk in your life. We're going to add some butter, some salt, and some pepper, and then some half and half. I do wish that I would have added a little more liquid because these ended up being kind of dense. One thing about Idaho potatoes is that they absorb a lot of liquid as well as salt. So that's one thing you have to keep in mind if you're using those for your potatoes. Now, I also have all of this parsley, so I'm gonna throw in a handful of this parsley and it just adds this beautiful pop of green. I absolutely love it. So that is what I have going on in there. Now I'm gonna be pulling off the bacon because like I said, I'm not gonna use all of this. It's just a little too much. Plus it's the peppered bacon. The kids find that spicy sometimes, so I can only use a little bit at a time. Now I have one onion here that I have diced up, so I'm going to add it and get it cooking. You wanna cook it till it's translucent. That's when it loses kind of like the sharpness of the onion flavor. Our meatloaf is out of the oven and it has quite a bit of grease around it, so I'm just gonna pour that off into a jar. And then we are going to add our topping. Lots of different choices you can do with the topping. Some people mix brown sugar with ketchup. I'm just going straight for the ketchup. That's how my mom always made it. It's how I grew up with it, so that's what I'm gonna do. I did see someone use Dijon mustard and honey before though. What are some of your favorite toppings for meatloaf? I would love to learn some different options and try some new things. So that is what we have going on there. I'm gonna cook it for about 10 more minutes and then I'm gonna add a glob of butter to the carrots after I drain them and that's going in the microwave for a couple of minutes and that's all I'm gonna be doing to the carrots. Now that the onions and the bacon have been cooking for a while, I'm going to add the green beans in. Some of the juice from the green beans is gonna to help deglaze the bottom of that pan and get some of that crusty bacon up. Another one of my favorite things to add to green beans is who's your sister sauce. So we're gonna throw in a couple of dashes of that as well as some salt. I'm not gonna add any additional pepper because like I said, that is peppered bacon. So that has pepper all on the outside of it when it's raw, so we don't need to add any pepper to this. That might make it a little too spicy. And that's all I'm doing for the carrots. It, those were so good, just with a little knob of butter and home canned, homegrown carrots. I'm definitely looking forward to doing some more stuff with our garden this year. So this is what it looks like all put together. I have meatloaf, mashed potatoes, bacon, green beans, and sweet carrots. And that's what's for dinner. Yum. Hey guys, for today's snack, I'm gonna use some strawberry gelatin, which, what's the best buy? Oh, best buy three of 22. So this needs to get used up. And then I'm gonna add some fruit salad. So just some fruit in there which is 12 by 22, so this also needs to get used up. And I've never added fruit to Jello before, but we recently just got some Jello cups that had fruit in it, and I thought that was really fun. The kids really liked that. I'm gonna save this juice and add it as part of our water, though, to the Jello. Red, strawberry. Oh, that's pretty good. So I'm just gonna give uh, it. Now in here is papaya, mango, mandarin oranges, pineapple, and peaches. Pretty cool. I think that sounds good. Mixed with strawberry jello. Looks like it's mostly pineapple. You're excited for the jello? Strawberry with mixed fruit. 
Now, normally, normally you would wait for the jello to kind of firm up a bit before you mix it in, but we'll just have it. I'm fine if it's just in the bottom. Now, normally for the big pack, you do two cups of boiling water and then two cups of cold water. I'm gonna do a little less than two cups though, because I am adding the, the fruit, which is gonna have some moisture to it. Plus I like them a little firmer, a little more like um, jigglers, you know. All right, two cups of super hot water. Just got it out of Chef Mike. Want to make sure it's nice and dissolved. Just keep whisking, just keep whisking. It takes so a while to dissolve all the gelatin. Just keep whisking that today. All right, I'm gonna add this to the fruit here. Alrighty, and now this goes to the fridge. Guys, our strawberry fruit jello has set up. Now it said you don't want to add pineapple because I want it set, but this seemed to set just fine. But he's excited to try it. We're gonna make a fun Fetty cake for dessert. This is the best by date of 2020, so this needs to get used up. I'm gonna be using some canned applesauce instead of the oil to kind of replace it. This is a good use of applesauce, unsweetened one, if you don't want all those oils in your cake. I also scrambled up the three eggs, and I'm going to be using the fruit cocktail and juice from the grapes that I strained earlier. I'm gonna be using that instead of water to add another flavor dimension to this cake. I'm gonna give this a good mix before I add the powdered mix to it. I was debating on adding more baking powder because that's one thing about using mixes that are a little older is you gotta worry that they may not rise. So if that's something you're worried about, you can go ahead and add an extra teaspoon or so of baking powder. I decided not to because I kinda wanna see if it did or not. So I'm going to bake this in a 9 by 13. I sprayed in my glass pan with some olive oil spray and now it is going in a 350 degree oven and it baked for about 35 minutes and then I, when I pulled it out I put it straight into the freezer. That really helps cool it down and makes it moist because it kind of freezes the steam that's still in the cake. So now I'm going to add some frosting to it. This is just cream cheese frosting in the can. It's expired from 2023 so it needs to get used up as well i try and space the frosting out so it doesn't pick up part of the cake as you spread it if that ever happens to you you can get crumbs in your cake so i try to spin the pan as i need to and just kind of push the frosting around without pulling it so hard that it rips off the top layer of cake if that makes sense and now i'm going to be letting the kids decorate it i have a little pack of sprinkles here that i had just the sprinkles, so I was letting them go ahead and decorate the rest of them. So the boys, Conrad and Gideon, are going to take care of the decorating of the sprinkles. I think they did a fantastic job. Now, I don't have any footage of us actually eating this, but it was delicious. All right, guys, don't think I forgot about that meatloaf because I didn't. It is now out of the freezer because it is completely frozen solid. So we are going to try vacuum sealing it now, and let's see if that works better. Wow, that worked so much better. I really appreciate oh, that did not. All right, so I'm going to trim this a little bit. So I want it to be on a part that hasn't been heated or tried to heat already. I'm gonna clump right here. I finally got that meatloaf sealed. Whew. Next time, make sure you don't trim off a little too much here. So I'm just going to label this meatloaf. Um, and then the month 1-24 for the year. 
salt meatloaf. It didn't vacuum too super tight, but that was my bad because I cut the bag too short. But that'll be good enough for now. Um, I highly doubt it's gonna be in the freezer that long because that meatloaf was absolutely delicious. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. If you guys really like these long cooking videos, please let me know in the comments below. If this was a little too long, you want me to trim it up a bit, I'm open to any and all feedback. Thank you so much, guys. Well, thanks for being here and seeing what I cook in my pantry week two. We're headed into week three, and I'm looking forward to seeing what I come up with next. What is the best meal that you've created this week with your pantry cooking? Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time on Mama Bear's.